Yeah, yeah, we'll start with the wee. Twelve months ago, this time last year, you were playing for Australia at the World Cup mm -hmm. uh, against France. Flash forward to now, how would you sum up the, these past 12 months? Um, a lot of ups and downs. Um, obviously for me, signing the contract I did after the World Cup and coming here for me it was a big high. Making my debut again, another big high, and then obviously the ACL after that, a bit of a low. But um, I'm feeling really good now, going into the next season. How difficult has it been, the process, since the, the ACL? It's been really hard, you know, there's a, there's a lot of tough days in the rehab and it's obviously disappointing doing your ACL in general, but doing it when you go to a new club and it's on your debut and you feel good, it's, it's gut-wrenching, but I think now that's all behind me and I'm just looking forward to the next season. It's a long process, obviously, coming back from an injury mm -hmm. like that. Was there ever times when you, when you questioned whether it would be as good as it was before? 110% happens all the time. Um, you know, when you're in the gym and you're working on it every single day and it still doesn't feel the same as it did, you're just like, when's it ever going to feel the same? But, you know, it does get better over time and I'm feeling really close to being 100% now. Yeah, so how are you feeling now that you've got this chance, the start of a new season? <laughs> what impact and what sort of expectation do you have on yourself? I'm really excited um, going into this season, obviously just to be fit and to be training with the boys, but also hopefully to make an impact on the season. Um, for me, the biggest focus right now is just getting back and playing that first game, um, training back with the boys and just have my eyes set on getting my body right, feeling 100% and getting back for that first game. It's fair to say a lot's changed since you joined. You joined under Brendan Rodgers and mm -hmm. now you're under Neil Lennon. How has that been in adjusting that a new manager has been coming in? What's he been saying to you? Um, I've talked a little bit with the new gaffer. He seems like a really good guy. Obviously, as you guys know, he's very passionate about the club. And, um, you know, he's just asked me a little bit about my injury. But I assume the, uh, the football talk is going to come more when um, closer to being in training with the boys. I suppose we found out today the first step in this Champions League journey as well. I imagine mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons you came to Celtic. Just how exciting is that prospect ahead? Very, very exciting. I'm just... Um, a little bit disappointed I won't be there for the first one, but um, I'm hoping to be there after that. When is it that you're sort of targeting a return to action? Um, for games, I'm not 100% sure, but I think for training, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. When you look at the sort of competition in the squad, obviously in the wide areas there's a lot of quality. James mm -hmm. Forrest, Scott Sinclair, Marion Schmidt coming as well. Yeah. How do you sort of rate your chances of not only getting into the team, but what the competition's like as well? Yeah, don't forget Mikey. <laughs> Great player. Um, like I said, you know, there's a lot of great players, there's a lot of great wingers, and we have a lot of wingers as well. But like I said, for me right now, the focus is just on myself, you know, getting my body right, making sure I feel good, and then hopefully the rest will take care of itself. What can we expect from you when you're back fit? Um, you can expect a decent left winger, I guess. <laughs> um, it's a tough question, isn't it? I guess I've lost one. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> it's a tough question. Ah. Oh. You mentioned all, all the, the great wingers that we mm. have here at Celtic. What makes you different from them? Um, I guess for me it's a little bit that, for me it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like I'm a bit unpredictable. Like even I don't know what I'm going to do sometimes on the ball and you know it's just kind of a playoff instinct. So, With regards to the, the Champions League draw, drawn team from, from Bosnia, how difficult is it to, to go into the, to the unknown against these teams? It's really difficult, you know. I think uh, the biggest mistake you can make is uh, underestimating a team like this. I think going into it, you have to take it very seriously. Um, it's Champions League, after all, anything could happen. So you've just got to, you know, do your research and play as well as you can. Do you think it's unfair that as champions, Celtic have got to go through so many qualifiers to reach the group stages? Um, I think it's a little bit unfair, but I also think that um, the cream always rises to the top, and I think we have the quality to go through all the way and I think we are going to and um, it's unfair like you said but at the end of the day you know we've just got to stick our heads down and get the job done. I suppose Celtic are in a bit of a unique position that you know the sort of the biggest games of the season come right at the very beginning is that a sort of do you feel do the players feel that sort of pressure that you know for some Celtic fans your season's riding on games that happen right at the beginning, beginning of July? Yeah um, obviously it's tough and that's why everyone when you come straight away back into pre-season, everyone's so serious, you know, and everyone's like really got their heads down and straight into it. Um, in my experience before, obviously pre-season, first couple of weeks, you know, take it a little bit easy and then you notch it up towards the end of it, getting ready for the season. But here it's just straight into it, bang. 
and and that's obviously because there's such important games happening very soon. You, you see that well last season, I suppose what we've scored that some Celtic players were playing up to sixty nine different Camel Grounds in yeah. sixty nine, seventy games. It's crazy. And then international whereas you're sort of coming in the other side, you kinda of can't wait for the next games to start. Does that sort of maybe give you an advantage going into the new season that you're so hungry to play well maybe some of these guys maybe want to rest their legs? Mm, I guess so, but <sighs> That's like just assuming stuff, you know. I'm not really sure, you know. Some, I'm not 100% sure where everyone's heads at. Um, I know there's a lot of boys that played nearly every game last season, last season, and they're still hungry as, and they want to play every single game again this season. But um, yeah, not sure. When you see the players at the end of the season, you know, lifting the trophies and the celebrations and stuff like that. Does that make you really hungry to, to get involved, to get out on the pitch? And Definitely, yeah, over? 100%. Um, like the cup final, for example, going out onto the field with the boys and. Uh, the fans were there and also winning the league, things like that. Um, it just makes you so, like, gets you so riled up and you just really want to, like, be out there playing in those kind of games. Have you set yourself a target of what you'd like to achieve this season? With regards to? Success. Um, for me personally, like I said, my personal goals right now are just focusing on getting my body right, getting my knee right, feeling good and just have my eyes set on that first game. And then from then on, I'll look forward after that. Danny, just to go back to the start, when you were talking about the ACL and you know, questioning whether you could get back to where you were before that happened, what got you through those hardest moments, would you say? Um, I was actually asked this question just before, and for me, honestly, the biggest thing is that feeling that you have when you're warming up for a game or, you know, it's or when you're watching the game and it's a Champions League night and you like it's just tension in the air and everyone's so like on edge like I love that and for me it was always a reminder of that kind of feeling you know when it's going through the tough times just imagining closing my eyes and imagining warming up with the kid on and getting ready for a game yeah and obviously as Ronnie mentioned transition at Celtic during the time here Brendan Rodgers went Neil Lennon came in what has Neil Lennon been like with you what advice has he given you what support mm -hmm. for me he's been more about um, like obviously my rehab and you know he's always asked me about how my rehab's going if it's going well and he's always asking me when he when I'm back and he wants me back in the squad and he wants me playing so for me that's a big confidence booster because you're there doing your rehab chipping away at it every day and the gaffer on the other hand is telling you he wants you back so it helps massively. Does it feel like he's desperate to get you back in the team? Oh I wouldn't say desperate but um, it's good to know that the gaffer wants you back. Has he set you any goals or has he given any thoughts as to how this season might progress in terms of you and the rest of the squad? Mm, like I said, that kind of stuff I think is hopefully going to come when I go back into training. Right now it's more with the physios and when's my body going to be right to train rather than just setting goals. Alright, and seeing that you were in Celtic's training, Scott Brown can get a bit angry if he's people trying not oh, <laughs> that story by the way completely blown out of proportion it was just a bit of banter yeah it was just a bit of, it was just a bit of a laugh yeah but you also hope not to do it again if you're trying to compare to really no he's all right he's a really chill guy he's cool